The 1990s brought a tidal wave of sitcoms crashing onto television's shores. Some were amazing, some were terrible, but all of them in time came to an end. These are the strangest, most interesting, and most surprising stories of 90s sitcom cancellations, from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air to Frasier. Freaks and Geeks transcended its sitcom status, ultimately becoming one of the defining teen shows of the 1990s. Unfortunately, much of its reputation is posthumous. It was canceled after one season and never given another chance by NBC. High school is for learning, but it's also where you should be learning how to socialize. The show debuted at 8 p.m. on a Saturday, an awful time for a new show, especially one aimed at teens. Freaks and Geeks then changed time slot, hampering any chance at building ratings. The producers created a website, a rarity at the time for TV shows, to help fans keep track of when it was on. But NBC refused to put the URL on any commercials, lest viewers gravitate towards the web instead of TV. There were also tensions between the producers and the network. NBC wanted a more positive show, while the producers wanted to keep things realistic. Executive producer Judd Apatow became particularly known for viciously defending his show to any and all network executives. In the end, the show was canceled, but its legend has only grown. Phenom, a sitcom about a tennis prodigy and her family, lasted one season and has largely been forgotten. The show had a lot going for it at the start, and perhaps more importantly, it had a great time slot right after the mega hit Full House. So why was it canceled? Depends on whether you ask ABC or the producers. ABC implied it was canceled because it underperformed. Reviews indicated a lack of direction for the show, but this was still a shock to fans. Phenom creator and executive producer Dick Lasucci was also surprised the show was axed. He claimed that even though their own metrics showed good ratings, ABC told them that their numbers didn't match. Many saw this as code for a network looking for an excuse to cut a show. Third Rock from the Sun followed a group of aliens masquerading as an upper-middle-class American family, studying human habits and reporting back. It was, if you'll excuse the space pun, a far-out show that dabbled in everything from witty wordplay to slapstick. It had a great cast, including John Lithgow and Kristen Johnson, and introduced the world to Joseph Gordon-Levitt. The show was off-kilter enough to have dedicated fans, but it had a hard time maintaining casual viewership thanks to a frequently changing time slot. The network didn't believe in Third Rock in spite of its longevity. As such, the finale of Season 6 was designed as a series finale and the creative team signed on for different projects, correctly suspecting the show was done. The cast ultimately accused the network of having mishandled the series. Will Smith's career trajectory from rapper to living with his auntie and uncle in Bel Air to the world's biggest movie star is a strange arc. Starting as the Fresh Prince with DJ Jazzy Jeff in the 1980s, Smith got rich from his music, only to blow all his money on an unsustainable lifestyle. After getting in trouble with the IRS, he signed on to star in a sitcom largely because he needed the money. Luckily for him, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air went on to become one of the most memorable sitcoms of the 90s. Running the gamut on topics from normal teen issues to somber dives into racial discrimination, it was such a hit that it never left its 8 p.m. Monday time slot during its entire run. By the end of the series, Smith had become a megastar. In addition to the leading role on Fresh Prince, he also had Six Degrees of Separation and Bad Boy under his belt, and he was set to star in a movie you may have heard of called Independence Day. Smith loved his castmates, but recognized the show was limiting and knew it was time to move on. He had something bigger in mind. Goodbye. Will. Bye-bye, G. The Fresh Prince was canceled largely because Smith was ready to move on to the big screen full-time. Few sitcoms come longer running and better loved than Frasier. Starring Kelsey Grammer as radio psychologist Frasier Crane, the show went through almost the entirety of the 90s and beyond. Originally a spin-off of Cheers, Frasier stuck around a season longer than its predecessor. But why would such a long-running and successful sitcom get cancelled? Part of it was a ratings dip, yes, but the larger part was unsustainable production costs. Long-running shows often see higher production costs, given that actor salaries tend to rise and more care is put into the show itself. By the end of the final season, each episode of Frasier cost over $5 million to make, $1.6 million of which was Grammer's salary. He implied he'd be interested in a 12th season and might take a pay cut, but an NBC spokesperson said the network just couldn't see the numbers working. So the show's writers decided to end things on a high note. Thank you, Frasier. For, well, you know. 
Strangers with Candy was one of the most bizarre and acclaimed comedy shows of the late 90s. Starring Amy Sedaris as Jerry Blank and featuring comedy icons Stephen Colbert and Paul Dinello, the show was a hit on Comedy Central. It ran for 30 episodes over three seasons in 1999 and 2000. Its weird, twisted morals alone make for some of the best comedy of its era, even though it's mostly a cult hit. As such, Strangers with Candy often makes lists of shows that were canceled too soon. Here's the catch, though. According to Sedaris, the show was technically never canceled. In that era, most Comedy Central shows only lasted three seasons, and the Strangers with Candy team operated under the assumption that they'd be no different. Sedaris later noted that the final episode of the series was simply written assuming it would be the last, and it just worked out that way. Martin was one of the highest-rated sitcoms during Fox's rise in the early 90s. By the end of the show's run, it was still the third most-watched show among black viewers. It was a hit however you slice it, and still does well in syndication. When it ended somewhat abruptly after five seasons, star Martin Lawrence said it was because he felt it was just time to move on. This sounded plausible enough at the time thanks to Lawrence's buddy movie stardom. Of course, even in the pre-Twitter days, Lawrence was enough of a public presence that most people suspected differently. His erratic behavior was making headlines even before co-star Tisha Campbell filed a sexual harassment lawsuit against him after she quit the show. The lawsuit was settled and Campbell only appeared in the series finale on the condition that she didn't have to be on set with Lawrence. Lawrence told GQ magazine in January 2020 that he regretted a lot of his behavior in the 90s. He also openly acknowledged for the first time that he walked away from Martin because of the lawsuit. Martin and Campbell are reportedly on good terms as of late, so there's at least a happy ending. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.